Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all excellent and I hope you're having a great Halloween in the spirit of Halloween and doing some stuff on the Axe FX. I've called this preset that we're going to go through trick or treat because there are some fun little tricks going on with certain blocks, but mostly this is all about the treats. I just want to show off essentially my favorite effect types in each of the blocks that I use all the time, whether I'm gigging or I'm recording or even just noodling around at home, which I do probably more than anything else, especially at the moment. I've got my PRS Custom 24 plugged straight into the Axe FX3. There's no post-processing, but I do have the Band Commander model at the stock settings with just the bright switch turned off. I have a new cabinet IR that I made that I will put on Axe Basically, I got a new Sennheiser 421 microphone, so I shot some more impulses of my Marshall cab with greenbacks and I made a new mix. I think this is a 421, a Royer 121 and a Shure SM7B. It sounds pretty tasty. As you saw, preamp low cut is at 80 hertz, high cuts at 10K. And then it's the London plate reverb at stock settings. This sounds pretty awesome already. <laughs> Just an awesome clean platform, the good old band commander. All right, let's get started. We're gonna do some clean tones and then we'll do some dirtier tones. I'm gonna start off with a compressor block because I absolutely love the JFET compressor. Kicking this in basically adds a little bit of color. It's not a super transparent compressor, but I want that. I love the way it just kind of warms the tone up, gives you a little bit of a boost and it makes playing super clean a lot easier. It's kind of like when we use distortion on an amplifier or we cascade gain stages, you know, a boost pedal into a high gain amp. We get compression from the distortion. It makes it easier to play. Well, if we want that with a clean sound, I think this JFET comp is one of the best ways to do it. Absolutely wonderful. So that's the treat for me. I'll show you the little trick I like with the JFET compressor. I'll go over to channel B. You can see the settings there, slightly longer attack time and shorter release time. And what you do is you put it together with another compressor with a much faster attack and a longer release. This is the old stacked 1176 style trick. Have a listen to this. <laughs> Now that is super duper squishy. It feels so fun to play. And if you're into those kind of big squishy compressed clean tones, this is an awesome trick you can do on the Axe FX 3. So I really like that. I'll just go back to channel A on my compressor and kind of park it there for the rest of this. All right, let's just go through some more blocks. Probably my favorite phaser is the FAS Vibe. So this is a custom Univibe style effect. I just like to turn the rate up somewhere past two and this to my ears really gives you that lovely Robin Trowell Bridge of Sires style vibe. <laughs> That's such a great sounding effect in there. And I guess the trick here is running the phaser before any type of overdrive, which we'll get to in a second. So that just does me when it comes to vibe. I'll go over actually to channel two where I've got the Atomica High model. Again, basically stock settings. I've just turned the depth down. Uh, let's actually just get rid of this second compressor for now. I'm gonna keep this phaser on top of the Atomica. Let's hear that. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's also highly, highly addictive. That's such an awesome vibe kind of sound in there. I much prefer that to the classic vibe in there. All right, the flanger. Huge Pat Travis fan. So the ADA flanger model that was added a couple of firmwares ago, I have been super into. Uh, let's hear that again uh, in front of the Atomica, but it's also a really nice one in front of Queensland. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Uh, I've got on channel B, this is the kind of little trick here. I've got the MXR style flanger, but what I've done is on the bypass, I've attached this to a momentary control switch so that I can just press on the control switch when I want the flanger on and when I release it, the flanger is immediately on. <laughs> That's a pretty fun one right there in front of a dirty sound. Let's go back to our clean sound and we'll just hear this ADA on the clean sound. It's a really nice alternative to a chorus. <laughs> And that JFET comp is just doing it for me. All right, let's move over to the actual chorus block. Uh, these are some settings that I basically matched to an old Boss CE1 chorus that I've got kicking around here. It's actually not mine. It belongs to a good friend of mine who has now moved into state. So it's just kind of parked here and I pull it out every now and then and just revel in how glorious it sounds. But it also sounds glorious here. <laughs> Perfect if you love those late 70s chorus tones. All right, let's go to the drive block. Uh, I've got four different drives in this particular block here. Into the clean app, I really like this compulsion distortion based on the full tone OCD. If I go to the bridge pickup, uh, this just kind of makes this clean app sound nice and meaty. <laughs> Awesome. On channel B, I've got the Tone of Kings. I prefer this one with like kind of single coil modes on, like say if I'm playing a Strat, this is my go-to drive. I'll go to the parallel mode on this. Gets <laughs> Perfect for that kind of bluesy, cleanish drive strat thing. On channel C, I've got the fuzz face. And on channel D, I've got the octave distortion, which is a lot of fun. If you play on the neck pickup and you roll your tone control all the way down, this really makes this effect super, super apparent. <laughs> And both of those fuzzes are pretty awesome in front of a dirty amp. Uh, you know, especially this, uh, where is it? The octave distortion. I really like it in front of the Atomica. <laughs> A 
absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to park this, I think, on the fuzz face for this particular scene here. Let's go back to the clean sound, though. Amp and cab we've talked about. Uh, the trem block, just the bias trem is such an absolute audio treat for your ears. I like bringing the rate down a bit, but otherwise it sounds amazing. You can also do this in the amp block. If you go to the power supply, there's a built-in uh, trem in there. I'm pretty sure it's the same one as a bias trem, though. <laughs> Absolute bliss, maybe my favorite trim sound ever. Rotary block at the stock settings, I love as well. <laughs> Really great if you want that kind of David Gilmour rotary style thing as well. All right, now onto the fun stuff. All of this has been fun, but this is particularly fun. The delay. I love the stereo BBD delay type, and that's the treat. The trick is setting the left-right time ratio to 75% and the tempo to a dotted eighth. This is going to give you a dotted eighth on one side, a quarter note. Sorry, did I say quarter note? I meant to say quarter note over here. So it's a quarter note with the left-right time ratio set to 75%. It'll give you a quarter note on one side, a dotted eighth on the other. <laughs> So if we bring the level on that one up a bit and let's crank the fuzz face into it, let's hear that. <laughs> I like that so much. Let's hear that with the dirty tone. And again, I've got the fuzz face on there, so this should be even more glorious. <laughs> quite uh, brave enough to try and play all of Cliffs of Dover at the moment. But yeah, just as a kind of straight up delay, I love that. Uh, it's also really nice stacking something like, actually, here's a fun trick in the amp block. You can use the preamp boost. I love the CC boost in front of the Atomica, in front of just about anything, actually. So uh, cranking that on and leaving that delay on is going to give me a nice alternative boost. You could assign this to a control switch as well. Actually, let's do that. Let's assign this to control switch number one, which is not a momentary switch, so I can turn it on and off like so. That's pretty awesome. That's basically my go-to rock lead sound, uh, the Atomica with the CC boost on and this particular delay. Okay, so one cool thing if you want an alternative delay sort of thing going on, is using the 10 tap delay rhythm delay. So pretty much stock settings. I've set the low cut and high cut uh, up and down a bit respectively, but you go to the taps and you can set these to whatever time you want. So I've been playing around with an old delay unit and trying to set up a similar thing that I had to this block here where you get an independent quarter note and dotted eighth note. But this particular old rack delay that I was using, uh, you set one time to 375 and one to 500, but what it actually gives you is a 375 millisecond delay and then a 500 millisecond delay, and then it doesn't give you another 375 milliseconds. It like calculates the difference between the time. So I've been able to replicate this with the 10 tap delay. So the first delay is a bit longer and then the other little delays just kind of oscillate 
almost like a ping pong kind of thing, which I've done using uh, the pan shape, setting it to sine and turning the pan alpha all the way up. So it's going to oscillate between each side. If that makes no sense, have a listen to this. <laughs> So here that goes da 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 da, whereas the stereo BBD goes da 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 da, slightly different. Even though the stereo BBD is much much darker in there, so subtly different things. Another absolute treat is the quad tap delay in the multi delay. I've talked about the multi delay so much, it might be my favorite delay unit ever, but. What I've done is I've got the same kind of dotted eighth note, quarter note thing going on in the delay block. It's running in parallel, so I have set the mix to 100%, so no dry signals going through there. And I've used the input gain to adjust the level. But I've used two short delays here and added some chorusing to each of those. So I'm going to get this really big, wide stereo chorus and delay. Uh, basically, the inspiration is the Aussie No More Tears album, that huge guitar sound that Zach Wilde has on there. This kind of gives you that in one block. <laughs> And that in itself is kind of the trick and the treat because you're making use of those chorus lines. The latest firmware 1404 gives you a lot of control over things like the high cut slope. So if you wanted to get more of like a steep cutoff with this, like so you can do it much like the delay block. <laughs> Glorious, absolutely glorious. While we're here on the dirty sound, the pitch block, bit of dual detune. This is gonna give you that classic like old Eventide or Yamaha SPX pitch change style thing. Uh, I've just used the dual detune. I've got minus eight on one side, eight on another side, mix at 50%. This also acts as a big thickener and widener. <laughs> And the cool thing about this is if you set the input mode to stereo, it's going to preserve things like your multi-tap delay in front of it. Very nice indeed. All right, let's go back to that clean scene because uh, we've almost reached the end of this. The Plex delay block, though, is my go-to for a big ambient reverb. As you can see, I've got this set up with quite a bit of low cut and high cut. Again, it's in parallel, so I'm using the input gain at 100%, mix at 100% because I want a lot of the effect. Input diffusion I've turned up a little bit. I don't think there's any kind of ducking or anything like that happening at the moment. Little bit of modulation on there, which is nice. This, kind of like the way the multi-delay is one of my favorite delays ever, this is one of my favorite reverb. <laughs>
So when you layer some of those other effects on there that I've got baked in there, it's like instant prog rock in the box. All right, one last little trick with the reverb. One of my other favorite types is the South Church reverb, especially for clean sounds. Let's just hear it. <laughs> There's a wonderful big kind of washy reverb there. Using the ducker in the reverb can be really effective, much like ducking delay. So I'll turn the threshold down a little bit. Let's go for quite a bit of attenuation. Let's try like 18 dB and the release to about 100 milliseconds. So I'm still gonna have that big wash when I stop playing, but it's gonna duck the reverb under my main playing. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. It's got the same kind of basic tone there, but it's sitting around my playing a little bit better. You can do the same thing with things like the delay as well. This is really nice for distorted sounds. If I go over back to scene two, I'll have the South Church reverb on there. But if I don't have the ducking, it's just going to kind of mess with my main signal too much. So we get this. I go for some attenuation. I'll also do the same thing on the delay just to kind of further illustrate the fact. Basically the same kind of settings. The threshold is a little bit lower on the delay. Shouldn't matter too much. And that is pretty sweet. So uh, there's some wonderful things you can do with some of my favorite effects blocks in the Axe FX3. If you've got particular favorite compressors, drives, rotary settings, whatever they are, feel free to share them in the comments. I would love to hear from you all. I hope you all picked up some fun little tips and tricks in here, and I hope you all stay safe and excellent until I see you next. I'm gonna play you out with uh, maybe some of this kind of fuzz on top of the Atomica. Let's add, uh, we've already got a big delay. Let's add the pitch and let's just add a phaser in front. Why not? Let's just go absolutely mental. Enjoy. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.